Okay, so we are going to consider this kinematics problem, which deals with height. And we're given that A.G. Hackett, the world's first commercial bungee jumper jump organization, and I've actually jumped off their first bridge, was on the bridge and he could was modeled by this function. Now I've taken the liberty to go to here. I've got my window from x goes from 1 to 50, and the y goes from negative 10 to 100. And when I graph it, I can see that I get that. Now, A part says to me, how high is a platform above the ground? Well, that means I'm looking for this point here. That's going to be when t equals 0. And now this is a heavy calculator question. And so I'm going to look for A part is going to be finding h at 0. And I can just take my calculator, ask for the value when h is 0, and I get 612 meters. That's two, three significant figures. That's A part. B says, if A day was left to hang forever, how high off the ground would he be? Well, as you notice on this graph, it goes up and down and, and it slowly starts to level off, a limiting value here. So that's as, as T gets very large. Well, if I look at my table, and if I change my table setting by second window, let's go up by fives and let's start at 20 enter and then I'll go to my table so as I go up by fives I can see that it's hovering around on 202.6 I'm gonna guess it's gonna be this value here is gonna be my limiting value this must go towards zero as t gets large and so what we can say is as t goes to infinity, the height goes to 202 meters to three significant figures. All right. Now, C part says, at what time is AJ moving the fastest? Well, the fastest implies velocity. And one thing I know about velocity, distance, and time is I know that if I have my position or my height, and if I take the derivative of height, I get the velocity. And this is, if I do dh dt, I get velocity. If I take the derivative of the velocity, so v prime at t, I get the acceleration. Similarly, if I go backwards, I integrate. I go this way, I integrate. So if I'm looking for the fastest, I'm looking for where I'm looking at the velocity curve. So if I then go to my calculator, and I'm going to turn off this function, but not delete it, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to, I'm going to do the derivative. Oh, sorry, let me try that again. I'm going to go to y equals y, y2. I'm going to go to math. And it's, I believe it's number 8 is the derivative. Number 8 is the derivative. And I'm going to find the derivative with respect to x of y1. And I'm going to do it for every single x. And then I'm going to graph it. So graphs here, you can see that's hovering around here. Now, if I think about bungee jumping, I jump off, I go really fast, and then I go slow and I go bounce up again. And so I'm looking for when is the velocity a maximum. And I could be going down as well. So I'm going to change my window now. And let's look at positive and negative values. Let's go from negative 20 to 20. And let's see what we have. Here is our function. Oh, I'm not, I haven't gone high enough of an interval. So if I go then to, let's make it negative 150 to 150. 
I'm going to try that. So just to reiterate, this is the velocity curve. The derivative of the height is the velocity curve. And if I'm looking for when is he fastest, well, this value here where I'm pointing at is the largest negative value. Negative means I'm going down. And so this value here, which is a minimum here, is the fastest where he's going to be. So I'm going to calculate the minimum. We'll make left bound zero. We'll make the right bound 20. And I'm going to guess around 5. And I'm looking for the minimum. And then I can see at what time is he moving fast as well. At C part, when t is equal to 3.46 to three significant figures. What is his maximum velocity, d part? Well, the velocity at 3.46 is negative 113.14 oh, to three significant figures, meters per second. And this is going down. He's going fast, going down, somewhere around here. Okay, so now we're going to state the first three interval where AJ's speed is decreasing. One of the things I want to get across to you is that just because the speed here was negative doesn't mean that it's decreased. It just means it's, it's, has a, it's going in a negative direction. So negatives and positives are all about direction, not slowing down or speeding up. And so when we get to E part, it talks about intervals where speed is decreasing. Well, if the speed is decreasing, that means the velocity and acceleration are fighting each other. So if I'm going in a positive direction, velocity is positive, but my acceleration is negative, that means they're fighting each other. I see it as fighting each other, and so therefore I'm going to be slowing down. If acceleration is positive, they're both going to be helping each other out, constructivism, and they get faster in the positive direction. So in order to get our first three intervals, or it's decreasing, we have to find the intervals for increase and decreasing for acceleration and velocity. So I'm going to switch over. Oh, here's my velocity function. I'm going to get an interval here. And here's, and I'm going to switch over to Desmos because just for efficiency and being able to see it. Here is my original function. Here is my derivative. This is the velocity curve. And I can see that it is, here are my values for the x-intercepts. So 8, so 0. So I can say at 0, 8.27, 16.53, and 24.8. Okay, and I know the velocity went, it was negative, positive, negative, positive, <clears throat> and there's more to go. I don't know if we'll need it though. Acceleration, on the other hand, though, <coughs> if I continue to go from zero onward, if I turn on my acceleration, which is this function, the derivative of it, I get all these points here for intercepts. So I get 0, 3.46, and 19.9, which is in here, 19.9, and then 28.26, 28.26. These are all my zeros. And my acceleration starts off as a negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And what I do then is I make intervals as such. And as I do this, I'm thinking about when are they the same. So I know that I have negative, positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, 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 positive. These are all positive. I missed one line to go through here. And I know these are negative, 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 and positive, 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 
negative, 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 positive, positive, and so on. And so I'm looking for the regions where they, the speed is decreased, so they are opposite signs. So in this region here, they are opposite. In this region here, I just want the first three. And then in this region here, they are opposite. And so what I can say then, finally, put it all together, is speed is decreasing from 3.46. I'll do interval notation to 8.27. And then it goes from 11.72 to 16.53. And finally, I get 19.99. Uh, all the way to 24.8. And so if I'm going to be, if my speed is decreasing, acceleration and velocity are opposite signs. They are fighting each other. And these regions that are not highlighted, the speed is increasing. Here, it's increasing in a negative direction. Here it's increasing in a positive direction. Okay, so there is your introduction to kinematics. This is our height or position. The derivative of that is the velocity, and the derivative of the velocity is acceleration.